Right. I'm going to show you how to write a poetry essay. Firstly, let's consider what's a poetry essay aiming to achieve. You need to show you understand the poem, first of all, in your essay, to, um, to communicate that to the reader of the essay. You should show you understand its key ideas and images, um, particularly since it's poetry, that, that you need to think about the imagery in a poem. And you should show you understand the poet's techniques. This is the essay title that you're going to have a go at writing an answer to. How does Hardy make the convergence of a twain such an effective poem? Let's just discuss that. There's two parts of this. There's the how. Okay, how does this writer manage to do this? What is it in the language that makes us kind of feel this is a good poem and effective? And that's the second part. You know, it's a good poem. You've got to evaluate, judge it, select the bits that are really working for you. And if they're not quite working for you, go back to the poem, reread it, get to know it well, so that you actually are engaging with it. It's no good if you don't really understand the poem. So go back to my other video and try and work out and really grapple with it and really work out what's going on. The structure of essay, you need to have three parts to an essay of this type, and this is a typical essay structure. You should have an introduction, you introduce the main topic, a main body of the essay, at least four paragraphs, where you explore the question in depth, giving your views, and then a conclusion where you sum up your thoughts. Okay? Your introduction. This should aim to make the reader think you have something interesting to say, but not answer. Raise, but not answer some of the key questions you have. Um, for example, you could write this, but don't copy this. This is just to give you an idea. If you're really desperate, maybe you could sort of adapt this into something that's in your own words. But I would strongly advise you to come up with your own thoughts. The Titanic is a fascinating topic for a poet because it's so rich in imagery. Thomas Hardy wrote one of his best poems about the Titanic called The Convergence of the Twain. In this poem, he describes a ship lying at the bottom of the ocean. It's a chilling poem, but what makes it so creepy and interesting? This essay will explore this key issue. Right, there's a few things here. Notice I have a topic sentence at the beginning. I just state, you know, something about the poem. So you could have a go at this. You know, the Titanic um, is, is a great subject for a poet or that you know so many things you could think about um, that to write a poem up about with the Titanic and then talk a little bit about Thomas Hardy um, and then perhaps address the question remember the question was how effective it was now I've kind of reworded the question there I've said you know what makes it so creepy and interesting but that's basically the question you've been asked to do and then I've said I'm going to explore this in the in the essay Right, the main body of your essay, you need to quote and analyse, or P. You need to have a point, evidence, and explanation for this. I'm going to talk about this a bit more in the next slide. Right, your main body, think, feel, see. This is the key to doing well in English and in um, poetry. You, you, you basically, for this um, essay, you need to have six or seven key quotes in the poem that make most effective uses of language and explain why they are effective. Remember, that's the question, isn't it? To show how, you know, does he make it such an effective poem? And you need to explain, therefore, why it is effective for you. So firstly, you need to think about what do the images make you think and take us through and explain in clear words what, what is it actually making you think about in this poem? What do they make you feel? What do these images, these words and um, bits of language make you feel? It's an emotional poem and we feel um, lots of different feelings in this poem at different points. What do they make you see? And um, there's loads of visual images in this poem. So um, why do they do this? OK. Right. Quoting and using quotation marks. Embed and embed your quotes in the essay. Put quoted words in quotation marks. So this is an example of this, perhaps of a bit of a main body of an essay. Again, you can use some of the ideas here in your own essay, but, you know, actually write it in your own words. Come up with your own thoughts. Hardy says that a horrible sea worm crawls over the mirrors of all the rich people and that, the, this, that it is grotesque, slime, dumb, indifferent. This is a particularly 
effective image because it makes me think about the bottom of the ocean and how different it is to the Titanic. The word grotesque makes me realize that the sea worm is ugly and is slimy. Again, I didn't put this in, but you know, that word slimed kind of gives you a sense of the worm actually crawling over these um, mirrors, doesn't it? You can actually feel it um, in the rhythm of the word. It makes me it gives me a funny feeling to think that those mirrors which have once been looked into by rich people are now being fingered um, by a slimy animal who doesn't care about anything human. So now I'm talking about my feelings and my thoughts about this and you know it does give you a funny feeling doesn't it? This whole poem is really creepy because you think about that ship down in the bottom of the ocean and it was once so full of life and you think you go over again in your mind don't you how what a contrast there was between what was actually happening in the ship just a few um, minutes before it sank and what's actually there now with everything lying at the bottom of the ocean in the most sort of ghastly and ghostly way. Concentrate upon a little or a lot. Don't worry about explaining the whole poem. Give it an overview of it. Then focus upon what works for you and why. So don't just take us through line by line, explain every line. You don't need to do that. You've got to answer the question and say what's effective and go into depth about that. Connotations. This is a crucial thing. You know, think about the connotations of the words and the language and the associations they bring to mind and what may they make you think, feel and see. That's the crucial thing here. OK, what, what you're your, um, what you actually see in your mind when you read the poem. Um, and again, if you don't quite understand the poem, you need to go back to it and really work on it and understand, you know, some key elements in it. Conclusion, you sum up your points by saying what you think is most effective about the poem. So for example, for me, it's the, the poem is most effective because it makes me think, okay? Um, it has conjured a lot of feelings in me of the sort of creepiness underneath the sea and I, I've seen it, it's visually interesting, but it makes me think about fate and the way in which our lives are controlled by fate. You know, any moment um, that iceberg could crash into the ship and we'll sink and go to the bottom of the sea. Oh, thanks. <laughs>